So I think we're up to about update three now for the build. Things in the last couple of months have been a bit slow, but I've been pretty happy because the car now lives in a garage. It's been living up at my parents' place outside, um, particularly during winter, that place never gets any sunlight and it's always damp. So for me being able to move it inside is a big deal. One of the first things I got into during that time is getting rid of all the rust out the sill panel. Removed the wiper motor and just made sure the water can go where it needs to. It's not sitting anywhere, there's no rust in there. It's a pain in the ass to get back in there in the future if you need to. So I wanna make sure while everything's out of the car, it's uh, perfect. The next notable bit of work that's happened with the build is the donor car is now engineless. I've got the M52 sitting in one of my sheds uh, up at my parents' place. So that thing is gonna be ready to receive the sump and a whole slew of other bits and pieces that I wanna to do to it while it's uh, still out of the car. So that'll be coming up a bit later. The last major bit of work that's happened recently is to do with the heater core, the heater box, and the conversion of the aircon gases to R134A. So one of the things I've done to the heater box and heater core here is the pipes that go through the firewall. Now from other conversions I've seen, this top pipe has a tendency to aim straight into the intake manifold of the M50, M52 engine. So I've sliced it there and got a friend to weld it back together. Apparently it was quite difficult to weld being so thin, but now it actually aims off to the other side, should give a bit more clearance to the intake manifold and just make things quite a bit nicer. The second thing I've done with this unit is I've replaced these gaskets. So this top one here is for the air vents that go into the dash. The second one is between the, uh, the unit and the firewall when it bolts in. You can still get new ones. Um, I figured why not? They were a little bit on the expensive side, particularly since I live in Australia, but I figured it's worth it. I'm uh, not planning on pulling them out again, particularly with the, uh, the new dash going to be all nicely trimmed, so I shouldn't have to pull that out again. Last but not least for this unit is the changeover to a TX valve that works with the new gas we're using, R134A. Been advised that the R12 one isn't going to work very effectively. So I managed to get this one in Australia pretty easy, nice and cheap. The unit itself is uh, bolt in completely, no conversion needed, and I've just packed some foam around it to make sure that I can keep all the cold air in the, uh, in the box there as possible. I also pulled the uh, evaporator out and I pulled out the heater core just to clean them out. There was quite a lot of crap in there, so clean that out, make sure they're good to go. And yeah, this unit's ready to go back in the car now. Another big part of the conversion is the changing of the condenser style. This is a more effective style, the parallel flow. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, but I've tried it too many times to care now. Parallel flow condenser. This is a much more effective unit. I bought this um, online. It wasn't the greatest quality. I couldn't buy it anywhere else. Couldn't seem to find it locally. Not at a decent price anyway. All these, up here were rivets. Um, didn't like the way that they were held on, so I drilled them out and put bolts with nylock nuts on them. Also, you can see on the back here with the fan, it's got these mounting points. They were all wrong. Um, it took quite a bit of work to actually get this to a stage that I was actually happy with it, and it all bolted up correctly. So uh, yeah, something that seemed quite easy actually became a bit more on the difficult side, but it's all ready to go in the car now. So let's get into the much more interesting stuff, motor stuff. So I've got the uh, M52 home finally. It's been sitting out at work for ages and really hard to get motivated to work on it when it's at work and I'm there all bloody day. So yeah, got it here, pretty keen to get work working on it. I've had it here for about a week and I've stripped it down and started test fitting bits and pieces. Just want to take a look at this. Car had a bit of an exhaust leak when I was driving it. Thought it might be one of the gaskets has gone. Not quite. Whole flange is missing. So uh, not sure if I'm going to get a new one of these off a wrecked car or if I'm going to weld on another flange or something. But yeah, bit of an exhaust leak. So let's get straight into it. So I started with test fitting the cross member with the engine mounts. Doesn't fit too bad. 
my nice E34 powder coated sump there. The, the only thing is, and a lot of the forums and bits and pieces mention this, you can probably see there that the engine mount is on a different angle compared to the uh, subframe. And that's just unfortunately with OEM engine mounts the way it's gonna be. Can get polyurethane ones, but not a big fan of them. Not for a street car anyway. So yeah, it's actually fitting up reasonably well. The only issue is I put this strengthening in and it pretty much covers the bolt hole or the, the thread part of the uh, engine mount because uh, the, the thread and actually goes through the, uh, the slot, not the hole that it did with the M40. I didn't realize that, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get a nut on there. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to get busy with the Dremel, but you know, can't win them all. So one of the things that I've also test fitted is getting a temp sensor into the engine for the gauge. Now E36 and E30 work a bit different. E36 runs a single sensor that goes down to the ECU. ECU then sends a signal to the uh, cluster and the gauge in the cluster. E30 works a bit different. Um, what they did on the M20 and the M40 and probably the M10 too, was they ran two sensors, one for ECU, one for the gauge. So the easiest way to amend that and make sure that your gauge in the car is working correctly is you can use this bung here. Luckily, uh, BMW puts it into the water jacket for us, nice and easy. So I've got the M40 temp sensor here. All that you do is then you thread this into that hole and done. This will send the correct signal to the cluster and you're good to go. So all I need to do now is I'll need to run a clip on here and then run a wire through the ECU to the C101 plug and from there the body loom of the car will take it to the cluster and I'll have a temp gauge that's accurate. Next thing I'm going to talk about is this mess of wires. So we've got this here, this is an auto engine harness and uh, it's going into a manual car so I need to get rid of the auto wiring out of it, there's quite a bit. For the auto, they actually have a, a computer um, that looks, the plug looks similar to the ECU's plug. And it also has an extra X20 plug, um, similar to the body looms. So a lot of the wires actually go directly from the trans computer to the extra X20 plug. Um, but there are actually three wires which connect the uh, DME with the auto computer. So I'm not 100% sure at the moment how to go about those three plugs. The rest of them should be pretty easy, just cut them out. But those three I'm gonna to have to look into a bit further, possibly leave them so I can get to them nice and easy if I find the car doesn't start when I uh, put it all together. Next thing I'm gonna talk about actually isn't specific to an E30 swap at all, but if you are gonna be doing it, good information to know, the water pump and the viscous fan. So separating these two, if you're not sure how to do it, is a bit of a pain in the ass until you realize how to do it and it becomes very easy. So you can see here, viscous hub bolts to the end of the water pump and that pulley is normally over the top of that bit just there. And obviously you can't hold the viscous fan and then go and undo that nut because the viscous fan isn't directly connected to the water pump, so it'll spin. So what you do is you get a bar like this, I think there's a bit of three or five mil alley, drill some holes in it that match that pattern there on the pulley. And then you pull two nuts off the pulley, put them back on with that attached. And then from there, you can stop the, the uh, water pump from rotating and you can get a big old shifter in there on that nut and you can pull the uh, viscous hub off. So I actually attacked it with the grinder because I got bored and uh, I have a new grinder. So that was a good bit of fun, but yeah, eventually I got it off using the proper method. Next bit is these little holes here, a bit hard to see, they're threaded and the idea behind them is 
That O-ring makes it a bit of a pain in the ass to get the, uh, the water pump out if you're replacing the water pump. So what you do is you get a bolt, standard sort of bolt that they use. I think I use some off the sump. And uh, you can put the bolt in there and there's one on the other side. And you can use those bolts when you uh, tighten them up, it slowly pushes the, uh, the water pump away from the block. And because it's nice and tight with that O-ring there. So if you do that, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. So it's handy stuff to know. So next video, pretty keen to get stuck into the engine uh, a lot more. This video is more just checking things, making sure they fit, test fitting. So next time I can actually start bolting them on properly. We've got uh, obviously the, the subframe and the E34 sump to put on. I'm just waiting for a little gasket for the pickup, for the E34 pickup. So once that comes, I can get stuck into that. Uh, I've got the clutch and I've got the uh, flywheel sitting here. So I'm pretty keen to put those bits and pieces on. Uh, I also got rear main seals and maintenance side of things, hoses that I want to do to future proof everything. So yeah, looking forward to, to doing that. Also get the heater box back in the car. I broke a, a little clip when I tried to test fit it, um, which kind of sucks, but oh well. Got to uh, go fix that up now and uh, yeah, looking forward to getting more stuff done now that I've actually got a garage. Soon I'll have a decent bench and uh, actually get things done. So I'll see you next time. Hopefully.